Hey everybody, HK Sniper here. So this video was brought to my attention on a Facebook page, and it was originally another video that I'll share in this. There's a piece of that video I really want to share that kind of goes along with the discussion on this. So I'm going to say this before I even get started on this. This was filmed in 2018, and so it's been a few years. I really hope that these guys have improved since then. I, I really do. I mean, it's good to see younger people in the hobby. I suspect these guys are just starting out. I really hope that they've improved their impressions, improved how they do things. I'm not sure, but I just hope so. But there's a lot of things in this footage, and I'm not knocking these guys in particular. I'm not targeting these guys. I just stumbled on this video, and it has a lot of points that I think really need to be covered. So, there's a lot of things in this video that is just, wow. Uh, it, it's kind of a real big reason why I stopped doing West Front uh, World War II. It's just, it, it's a doozy. I mean, this is this is something, something else. And I'm going to kind of go through it. It's going to be kind of like a reaction video. I'll play the video, I'll pause it at times, uh, I'll discuss it, and we'll go from there. So I've actually skipped forward quite a bit on this video. There's a lot of downtime at the first uh, three, four minutes or so, but I've paused it right when the action starts, and we'll go from there. So let's let's get started on this. So we got a, a German here with a, a PPS 43 on the Western Front with SCG pouches. You know, I I'm not gonna knock the guy too much. He could be new. Uh, it's something I kind of wish wasn't seen so much. Uh, it, it's not as common now since the MP40s have been coming out. Uh, flat bread bag. <laughs> drives me nuts. I, yeah, it just drives me nuts uh, seeing the flat bread bags. And of course, as always, with blank weapons, the joys... Or sorry, uh, any live weapon, the joys of using blanks. <laughs> So, here we go, hands up, he's char- here we got Mr. Hero here, here's where we're gonna pause, the first thing. GIs, stop doing this, <laughs> you look ridiculous, you're charging up an entrenched position with a pistol against, what, okay, we got one dead guy, one guy just ran off, there's another guy in the bushes somewhere in the background. A guy obviously in the trench. This is a fixed machine gun position. There's an LMG there. Another guy point blank with an SMG. And you're going to charge up there with a pistol and yell, hands up. Ugh. <laughs> it's just, guys, I understand it's a hobby. But let's be realistic. You can do this with some frame of realism. Being Mr. Hero, GI, charging up with a pistol is something that happens so much. And this guy comes up with a, a Wather P-38, too. Stop doing this. <laughs> so let's continue. So th here's another one. That right there, so dangerous. There is a guy that's in those bushes, a German, that was laying in those bushes over there, and this guy charged up and shot him point-blank range. I actually have scars on my hand from a GI that did this that shot me point blank with an M1. That is just extremely dangerous. Like I said, I don't know if these are new guys. If you're new to the hobby, don't ever do that. That is just, you could hurt someone, you could put an eye out. Blanks are dangerous at close range. They're not something that's you know, they're not toys. These are live firearms. There's a lot of pressure coming out of the barrel still. It's dangerous. Do not do that. So here we got guys yelling from like 30 feet away. Hand a hawk. The usual. So we kind of <laughs> this awkward situation. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, he just got bum-rushed, so... <laughs> I 
I think that's a pretty realistic response, to be honest. So we have the machine gunner checking his wounded, and GI's doing their usual, you know, rough housing. So here we have this little fight. Of course, someone always has to do this. German reenactors quit doing this. All right. This seems to happen a lot with German reenactors. There's always one that tries to run away or fight. Just, just stop doing that. And here we go. GI reenactors. Stop with the get on your knees stuff. It did not happen. Stop. <laughs> just, just quit it. So he gets him to get on his knees and he's checking him. The usual. Uh, he wants him to get back up for some reason. As we're playing Simon Says World War II edition. So I may skip around a little bit on this just because there's there's a lot of downtime here. A lot, of, a lot of yelling for medic and stuff. Uh, a lot of people were in the comments were knocking, were knocking this kid. You know, it, it's good to get younger people into the hobby. And a medic role is something that they can at least do. Yeah, it looks weird. But I would rather see someone get involved in the hobby. And especially young so they can, so they can learn the ropes of the hobby. I actually have no problem with this. I think it's just a, a great way to get someone started in the hobby. And a medic role is something they can do since, you know, they're usually not allowed to... And then, of course, we have this. But a medic role is, is a good kind of introduction to the hobby since they can't have firearms. And this just... It's just ridiculous. So, we have this guy. This guy in particular. So he takes his shovel. And I really hope that these guys actually know each other. Because I would not want someone taking my stuff out of my, my kit. And it's like, th what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I mean, it's... I understand you're trying to make something very dramatic. And that's fine. But this is going a little too far. Uh, another thing I noticed in the background that there is a Red Cross nurse, a German Red Cross nurse. Germans, I understand you want to get people involved in the action. But again, let's be realistic about it. Nurses were not in the trenches. Let's not do that. They're not on the front lines. If you want to do something that involves a battle, yeah, there were instances where... You know, the front lines moved so fast that, like, a field hospital got overwhelmed or something. That's fine with me. But up here in the trenches like this, it's just, it just looks strange. I mean, it just does not look appropriate. So I'm going to skip a little further because this is some, some dead time that's in here. And this guy eventually starts... Coming over here and getting into another tussle. I'm not sure who actually started this one, but I mean, this is just come on, guys. If they know each other, that's that's different. But this, at this point, you're dragging the scenario on, and I'm sure that these spectators are watching. And you hear laughter in the background. These spectators are like, "What is going on?" And I'd be wondering the same thing. Even part of the scenario, I'd be wondering the same thing. Like, and then he's taking his bayonet out of the sheath. It's just breaks his Y straps. If you did, you notice that? Actually, broke his Y straps, yanking him out of that hole. This guy is out of control. To be honest, like this is all unnecessary. Like I said, I really hope he knew these people. I would be ticked off. 
Of course, you get the guy's got a submachine gun, but you know he's got a. I always plan on doing with this grenade, but. This guy comes back from the dead after being shot twice now. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Yeah, thanks for ending the scenario. <laughs> like, please. So I'm gonna pause it right there. This. This is just everything, in my opinion, that can go wrong in a you know a public event. Right there, <sighs> what a doozy! Uh, like I said, I'm not targeting these guys specifically. It's just that they did a lot of things wrong, and a lot of things that I tend to cover in my reenacting rants. Uh, and like I said, this was 2018. If any of you guys are watching this, any of you guys that were a part of the scenario, I really hope you've improved. And don't take it personal when I'm critiquing this. I'm sure you know, looking back at this, how rough this looked. Uh, there's just a lot of safety concerns here. Uh, a lot of things that just drug on the scenario that just it just need didn't need to happen. And, you know, we could do better. We can do better. All of us can. I mean, you know, I, I kind of nitpicked on some of the little things at the beginning. Oh, flatbread bag of stuff. I did that at the beginning, too. I stopped doing that, so it just became kind of a pet peeve of mine. But we can all improve. And I kind of hope that this is taken as some constructive criticism. And that we could do better than this. You can do all the dramatics and theatrics and still look realistic. Rather than dragging stuff on, breaking people's gear, getting into these these fights, I mean, you know, there was a lot of safety concerns with a lot of this that was going on. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I got one more little clip that came out of this that I'm going to share, and uh, we'll go from there. So, here's the other part of this video that I wanted to share. Uh, this is recorded from someone else. I did not record this. Uh, this is how it was presented, so uh, the vertical sideways camera is not me. I apologize for that. I'm not concerned about what it showed. You just watched what happened from a much clearer angle. But I want you to hear what the spectator says. Listen. If you didn't hear that clearly, the spectator says, this seems too one-sided don't you think? And that's where a lot of these spectators definitely, I think, will find common ground in their opinion of what they've seen here, and, and their opinion in reenactments in general. No one really took any hits. The, there's only two guys that pretty much died in this scenario. Um, when the one German kept coming back to life, uh, the GIs are charged again with pistols, not taking any hits, uh, and th and this is how you look to the re to the sorry to the spectators. This is how you look, and this is what they think. Think about this: Did any of these spectators leave this scenario having learned something? Think about that. So, anyways, again, I'm not knocking these guys. If you're watching, I'm not knocking you guys. This just happened to have a lot going on that I felt. Hits a lot of my <laughs> rain acting rants, and uh, I feel that it should be a, an example to help us improve. Take it as something constructive, and you know, you guys can do. And this goes for not just the people that were involved in this, but the, all the rain actors. You guys can do the theatrics, you can do the cool stuff, and you can look cool doing it while also looking somewhat realistic. And it just takes a little bit of coordination, so. GIs, Germans, Russians, whoever else, when you're at an event, get together. Remember, you know, and, and this is coming from a standpoint of a reenactor in America, we're all Americans. So we're just portraying different sides. We're all friends. We all do the same hobby. Get together, have a chat, come up with something really neat, 
something realistic, and then you can make that scenario flow. You can have people taking hits. You can have casualties being taken, but still make the flow. You know, if you want the GIs to win, yeah, you can twist and turn some things. If you want the Germans to win, yeah, you can twist and turn some things so that everyone's on the same page so that that outcome eventually you know, becomes reality. So, again, constructive criticism. I just felt that this, this definitely needed to be covered. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night.